Many people confuse parking charge notices with penalty charge notices, and it's quite understandable because usually when they are left on vehicles, they look very much the same. They both use bright yellow colouring and black large writing and black decorative markings around the edge of the notice. However, whilst both of them are valid, they should be thought of very differently because one is a fine issued by a local authority and the other one is an invoice issued by a private company. And if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. So please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and turn on the notifications so you receive updates of new videos. And if you have questions, check out Black Belt Secrets, my sister channel, where I answer your questions in the comments. So as I said, a penalty charge notice, emphasis on the word penalty. A penalty suggests you are being punished for something, which is what local authorities have the authority to do if you are parked illegally in the wrong place, overstaying or generally contravening any road or parking restrictions. However, a parking charge notice, emphasis on the words parking charge, is issued by a private company and it is not a fine because private companies do not have the authority to issue you with a fine, save for some rare exceptions such as G4S who have a partnership to issue fixed penalty notices for things such as littering. But this is something of a sore debate which I'll cover in another video, so make sure you subscribe for that one. But otherwise, and in the normal course of business, private companies cannot issue you with a fine. So what is a parking charge notice? A parking charge notice is ultimately an invoice to you for alleged breach of the terms for parking on private land. So as with any contract, these terms must be fair, but what is or is not fair has been the subject of many court cases, such as the Beavis case in 2015, and in a more recent case in 2020 with Britannia Parking Group Limited. In the latter case, the defendant parked on a private car park without paying the requisite two pounds fee for a one hour duration stay. On the car park, there was clear signage that if proper fees were not paid, then a hundred pounds parking charge would be issued to the owner of the vehicle, plus recovery charges, although this was in smaller writing, but still legible to anybody that would look at and read the sign. When Britannia first brought the case to court for 160 pounds, 60 pounds being the administrative charge that they added to the claim, the claim was initially struck out on the basis that it was an abusive process and that the 60 pounds was not recoverable, unlawful, pursuant to the case of Beavis in 2015. Even in an application to set aside the strikeout, set aside means it's no longer valid until proper arguments have been heard, another district judge refused to set the decision aside and the claim remained struck out, but Britannia appealed again. This time the appeal was allowed and the claim reinstated. This serves as a bit of a warning to anyone that parks on a private car park and doesn't pay the requisite fee. Not only might you have to pay £100 or so in a parking charge, but you may also have to pay additional charges, which were referred to as contractual charges within this claim. Contractual being that they were set out on the signage on the car park, and by contravening the terms of parking on that car park by not paying the £2 fee, those charges were part of the contract. But as with every contract, there is always the possibility that arguments can be made as to unfair terms in that contract. But what might seem unfair to one person might not seem unfair to a court. But what case law has taught us so far is that these kind of charges are not unfair. Because if you park on a private car park and don't pay the fee or you break the terms, then these charges are lawful. But it's not quite as simple as that. For example, if you had a parking charge notice for, let's say, parking outside of the marked bay on the car park, but you didn't see the lines on the car park because they simply weren't clear, then it would be unfair for you to be charged this parking charge when you couldn't possibly have parked within a bay if the bay wasn't clearly marked in the first place. So then what might you do if you've received a parking charge notice where the lines were unclear, then you've left the car park, but only to return to find that the lines have been painted in properly. Well, as I say in many of my videos, it usually comes down to the evidence. Whilst you may not have evidence of the original very faint or unclear lines, you may be able to argue that the lines have been painted in since. This might be particularly useful if it's quite obvious that the lines have just recently been painted. However, it always pays to be vigilant when you go onto a car park if the lines are not clear. Perhaps take a photograph of where you are parking so that you can show what it looked like at that moment in time. Now I know that most people don't want to go around their daily lives documenting everything that happens 
to form a record of evidence just in case something happens. However, what I will say is that a quick photograph will serve as a very good record of evidence if you ever need to fight a parking charge notice. For example, if you are just parking up and you simply cannot see any signs, then even a photograph of a lack of signs is evidence in itself because if later on a sign miraculously appears and the allegation is that these signs were clear to you, then you can show that in fact they weren't there at the time, therefore it would be unfair because you simply couldn't see any signs. Equally, terms of a contract must be sufficiently certain to be lawful and enforceable. For example, if the meaning of the signs is wholly unclear or contradictory or you simply can't read it, then any dispute is much more likely to be resolved in the favour of a consumer or what would be an innocent party. Some questions have come up in the comments where signs refer to parking for shop customers only. Insert shop name of your choice. One of those questions in particular is that if you park on that car park but in fact you go off and shop somewhere else, is it feasible that you could be issued with a parking charge notice? Well, coming back to parking on private land, you are effectively accepting terms of a contract that are set out to you by way of a sign, provided that they are fair and sufficiently certain. In this case, parking for shop customers only is quite clear that parking is only permitted for people that are shopping at that particular shop. In my view, if you park on shop car park and then actually shop somewhere else, you are in breach of those terms because you're using the car park but not within the terms set out on that sign. Now most of us have probably parked on one of these car parks and then gone to a shop elsewhere, myself included, but any time that I have done that, I have ensured that I have also gone into shop to do some shopping there because that was the purpose that I have used that car park. So at least I am within those terms of the contract and bearing in mind that they usually have a maximum stay time. It's usually about three hours. Now, whilst the shop is likely to be a little bit lenient, for example, if it has a coffee shop, you've been in there for several hours, you've been shopping in there. If they issue you a parking charge notice because you've been there for three and a half hours, they may well be lenient if you were to write to them and say, well, look, I was in this shop for several hours shopping at your place in the coffee shop. It's only reasonable that it took that amount of time. In my view, I suspect that that might be unreasonable for the shop to issue and levy that parking charge notice on you when in fact you have spent several hours shopping at that particular shop. There may be other instances that you're issued with a parking charge notice. For example, if you are parking in a disabled bay but you're not displaying a blue badge, or you're parking in a parent and child bay but you don't have a child with you. I suspect this is less frequent but not impossible that you might receive a parking charge notice in those situations. So any challenge of these parking charge notices should really rest upon common sense. If there is a term specified on the sign in the car park, you really ought to be following it as best you can. If there is a very minor infraction of one of these terms, for example, you are literally millimeters outside of a line, that might be considered unfair. Whereas as many of us have seen vehicles that straddle two car parking spaces right down the middle, obviously that is taking up two car parking spaces and is a complete breach of the terms and perhaps implied terms of that car park. Now, sometimes there may be a completely innocent reason to be in breach of these terms. For example, you don't have any coins with you and you simply cannot pay, but you must use the car park. In that situation, there will usually be a phone number on the sign and it would make sense to ring whoever is managing the car park or if it is shop, go into said shop and explain that you cannot pay because you don't have the coins. You may be able to offer some other form of payment or leave your name and address so that you can provide payment later. Either way, just making clear that you're not intentionally breaching these terms of the contract and offering some form of payment would be useful in avoiding a parking charge notice. But simply ignoring the situation or risking it is not advisable unless you want to be landed with a parking charge, which is likely to be significantly more than the two pounds or so that you needed to pay. In other situations, there may be a genuine emergency that prevented you from coming back to the car, resulting in you overstaying. In these situations, the parking charge would be technically valid. However, if you were to write and explain the situation with some evidence, 
Hopefully the company would be understanding and accept post payment. But in any event, if you are able to reach out to the company and let them know that something has happened, this would probably make it easier for you in that they might exercise discretion in not issuing the parking charge in the first place, although they are likely to want to see some evidence afterwards. So remember the main distinction between a parking charge notice and a penalty charge notice is that a penalty charge is indeed a fine and issued by a local authority, each of which have a separate appeals process which I've discussed in other videos. So in the meantime, I hope these additional tips have been useful to you. Make sure you subscribe to receive new videos and thanks for watching.